Right there, officer. That's him. The one who looks like he shouldn't be within 50 feet of a school zone. Hi, I'm Ludwig, and I got sued by Nintendo. It actually happened a few months ago, but I feel like it's worth bringing up now because of some huge drama and updates that have come out of the Smash scene. And even if you're the most casual of Smash fans, it's worth knowing about because this could change Smash as we know it. Or could it? But let's get into that in a little bit. First, back to me getting sued. It was technically a notice of infringement of intellectual property. And I'd show you the paperwork and verify it, but they did post my address in like ink in the background of every single piece of paper in this notice of infringement. So I, I can't actually show you. But to my very, very small understanding, I am a YouTuber after all, uh, it's basically like a baby cease and desist. Because rather than saying, hey, you must stop and never do this, they were like, hey, you must stop and then follow our rules. You cannot use your rules. Now, what was the big rule difference? Well, it basically comes down to modifying the game. If you don't know, I ran an event this past uh, few months uh, this year called the Ludwig Augren Championship Series. It was a pretty damn big Smash Invitational with an open qualifier. And up to this point, some context, there is a stage in competitive uh, Smash Melee called Pokemon Stadium. This is what it looks like. And in it, it has different transformations, right? It can look like this with a couple uh, uh, of big old platforms. It can look like this with a big old windmill you can stand on. And over the past couple of years, people figured out they could modify it and freeze it. So it basically always looks like this. And that was it was basically less luck involved because some stages and transformations are good for other characters and not so good for other characters. And, and, and Nintendo was like, hey, we don't like when you modify our game. Please do not modify our game. So I didn't. I didn't do that. Uh, and instead, uh, we left the transformations on. We kept it vanilla melee. And it actually, you might be thinking to yourselves, you know, sh this shouldn't matter. It's like a, such a small thing. It actually determined the winner of my entire tournament. Uh, because Leffen was losing very badly to Cody Schwab. He had 110%. Cody had 14%. The transformation came up. Leffen, using the back wall, got a huge combo. Ended up beating Cody. Ended up winning the tournament against Zane. So I literally determined the winner. Not that that's a huge problem because it was honestly really hyped to watch. But when there was a poll done in a Reddit afterwards, people were like, we want it frozen. We can't have it frozen, kiddos. It's not how it damn works because Nintendo doesn't want their game modified. And I'm allowed to talk about this now because they have been very forthright about all the things you must follow if you want to run a Smash event. In fact, they dropped a guideline, a community tournament guideline for every region. It first started with like Japan, then they dropped one for EU, and then they dropped one for America and Australia. And we're going to go through this guideline today because a lot of people were reacting and in, in part overreacting to this guideline, thinking this could be the end of Smash tournaments as we know it. So let's take a look at these guidelines, which include in part that idea of not modifying the game, but then many, many more interesting things. So there's basically two things you have to think about here. The first one is community tournaments, which is basically like, hey, I want to run a tournament at my college or with my friends or in my local community. And if you do that, you're supposed to do these things. Like you can only have a tournament up to 200 participants in person, 300 online. Uh, you aren't allowed to collect more than $20 per person for like a tournament fee. Uh, you can't have a prize pool of more than 5K. Just outright, you just can't do that. You can't make more than $10,000 if you're a tournament organizer. I don't agree with all these outright. I don't I don't think that, for example, a tournament organizer should necessarily only make 10K. I would feel fine if my local tournament organizer was able to make a full-time living and then provide better tournaments because they don't have to do a job and then a side hustle that's a passion thing where they're not allowed to actually make money. I feel, I feel like that's... That's a little weird. There's also a couple of weird specific rules that they threw in. Like they went into this very, you know, interesting rant about how you're allowed to technically have more than 200 people at a tournament if you do them in blocks and the blocks happen on different days. And then they also go into details about if you wanted to run a charity event at a high school. So, so a lot of specificities, but a lot of people are probably wondering, well, Ludwig, what happens if I want to run a huge event? Or if one of my favorite tournament organizers wants to continue to run their huge thousand-person events with tens of thousands of dollars in prize pool. Is that able to happen? It can it only be 200 people? If 201 come along, is Nintendo going to come and shoot them in the head? No. Not necessarily, at least. Uh, the way it looks right now is that if you want to run a large event, uh, you must get permission from Nintendo. Right? 
you must get a license and submit an application for license to use Nintendo games at your tournament. And if you get a license, then you are conceivably allowed to break most of the rules, like the player entry rule, the prize pool rule, and maybe the how much you make rule. Uh, I'm not really sure about that one. It doesn't really affect me per se because I lose so much damn money running Smash events anyway. And they might not accept your event if you break these. So these are kind of like the 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 hard and fast rules, the Bill of Rights, if you will, the ones that just absolutely cannot be violated by Nintendo. They won't approve an event if you do any of these. Uh, if you violate laws, infringe IP, fake that you have a license, uh, and then interestingly here, uh, involve any cheating, unauthorized access, modification of the game itself, aka why they came for me, why they sent me that, that uh, baby cease and desist. Uh, and then there's some vague things here, like if you use game consoles, accessories, and software not licensed by Nintendo. So I don't know if they, if you have a Mad Cats controller, are they going to come kick you in the throat? I don't know. That seems like really hard to regulate by Nintendo. And there's an interesting conversation to be had about the box as well, which, which is a whole nother can of worms that I don't need to get into. But if you happen to follow all of these and you send in your, your request to Nintendo to authorize your event, then conceivably, you should be able to run an event of really any size. At least that's the idea as it seems. Uh, and Nintendo, you know, that's, that's at least what it seems, does have the right to cancel anything, right? They can cancel any community tournament if there's 307 people instead of the 200 people allowed, or they could conceivably cancel any big event or not give them a license if they do not see fit. And... To understand this all, it is basically Nintendo trying to capture back control of their IP. And I think it's mostly for Smash Ultimate. In fact, if you look at the Japanese guidelines, they don't even mention Melee in it. The much older game that I care a little more about because it's a game I came from. But in the North American one, they do. Because they kind of have to because we forced their hand. Because we've kept their game alive for much longer than I think they would have liked to. Uh, but in the conversations that my team has had with Nintendo, they've seen pretty open to letting us run events and they said that they would try to give permission for events to be run within a reasonable time frame like one to two months and that's the big concern here because none of these guidelines truly matter most locals will be too small for nintendo to know or care or be able to keep up with anyway so if you have 205 people instead of 200 they're not going to give a rat's ass and then the big events they have to get permission from nintendo uh and so as long as they give the permission it's fine yeah, we can't have frozen Pokemon Stadium, but I don't think that is the worst thing in the world if we're able to continue running events for the next 10 or 20 years or so. And as far as that question, how quickly will Nintendo actually be giving out these licenses, we have a little bit of an idea. Because these have already rolled out in Japan. The applications to get your event license has already rolled out in Japan. And it's happened really fast. A Japanese Hokkaido local submitted their uh, form in the Nintendo guidelines, and it got accepted in one day. And then one of the largest... Uh, um, events in Japan, uh, Sumabato applied, and they got accepted for 10 events. The next 10 events are totally fine to be run. So it seems as though Nintendo's actually doing a good job of, of keeping up giving licenses for their events, at least in the Japanese scene. Hopefully they follow suit in the North American scene, the European scene, the Australian scene, or wherever people want to play Smash around the world. Uh, and, that's, and that's basically it. That's the update. So it sh should be fine. As long as they actually keep up with their applications and they approve them, things should be good. But we'll see. And I'll let you guys know if, if they're like, hey, Ludwig, we don't like that you're putting up a prize pool of 50K. Because that's where I'd be like, well, what do you mean, man? Bro, these people are broke. They need some money. I, I don't mind doing it. I have a sponsor to cover it. Why, why not? That, that's where I feel like it would be draw, uh, crossing the line. Uh, and I'll leave it off with uh, a little bit of a quote from the GOAT. You can uh, take my controller, Mango. my GameCube, my CRT. I'll tell you something. I'll play Melee in my fucking mind. As long as Melee <laughs> lives, I will play. And if you take it all, we'll fucking play in a garage. 20 people there. Hot, sweaty, gross. Me versus Zane behind a 7-Eleven for 25 bucks. And that's what it's always going to be. Mm -hmm. You don't understand that. The money, the fame, we don't, nobody gives. Anybody who wants to be a top player gives no fucks about that. So if you try to shut us down, you'll never shut us down. You think you might. But I promise you with all my soul, you got nothing on the Melee committee. So you can try. You're not going to succeed, whoever you are. Just remember that. So those are the huge updates in the Smash community. That's how I got sued by Nintendo and what it actually means. And I'll keep you updated if anything else changes. All right, see you later. Subscribe. Goodbye. See you later. Have a good one. Goodbye.